welcome into the video today which is about trigonometric equations. This is 5e in the P1 workbook. So today we're just going to be solving a number of trig equations. I'm going to show you a few examples. Uh, you will have, if you did IGCSE, will have only seen a few very simple ones. They're getting a, a little bit trickier here. Okay, so first thing to recognize is uh, when we're using our calculator to solve these equations, we go shift sign or shift cos or shift tan for the thing we're trying to find. So on the calculator, we've written a little sign to the minus 1x. It's just important to realize to start with that this does not mean 1 over sine x. Last year, you would have had the definition of what a negative index means. So this is just really notation telling us that this is the inverse function of sine. It undoes the sine function, okay? It's not 1 over sine of x. So this shows that these are inverse functions down here. Okay, so sine of sine to the minus 1x is x. Got the graph here. So remember that a function and its inverse are related just in that the inverse is a reflection in the line y equals x. So see, there you see it there. That uh, blue line there, that's the inverse sine function. You can see I shouldn't even be calling it a function at all because it is not a function. Okay, so that's the inverse sine relation. So what we want to do, if you wanted to make that a function, so just a bit of review from functions, guys, is you'd want to restrict the domain of the original function. Okay, so make this from maybe minus pi over 2 to pi over 2, and then the inverse, which would go from now from there to there, would be a function. Okay, so when we're solving these trig equations, a real simple one like sine of x equals 0.5, I've drawn the graph for sine of x here, I've drawn the line uh, y equals 0.5, so we're looking for when these two graphs intersect. Now from my graph there, you can see that there's four solutions. Your calculator only gives you one. So one of the things that we're going to try and work out how to do in this video is work out how to find the other solutions apart from the one your calculator gives you. Alright, so sine of x equals 0.5. We go shift sine 0.5 on our calculator. This is in effect what we're doing to both sides is the inverse sine of both sides. And your calculator should spit out 30 degrees if it's in degrees mode. Alright, so this first solution here is 30 degrees. Now I can see from the symmetry that this other solution here must be 30 less than 180, which is 150. This solution here must be 30 less than negative 180, so negative 210. And this other solution here is 30 more than negative 360, so negative 330. So I can use the graph and the symmetry to get the other solutions. The other method I recommend for finding the other solutions is the unit circle. So I'm going to use that here. So we've got 2 cos 2x equals root 3. So I've drawn the graphs for this one here. They're pretty, pretty uh, simple graphs to draw. So if you, if you like doing the, the graph way, then go for it. So 2 cos 2x, this one has a amplitude of 2 and a period of 360 divided by 2, 180. So it repeats every 180, or it repeats twice in 360 degrees. So there's the, the graphs we've got there. Root 3 is about 1.73. So you can see that line going across there. So there's four solutions here. Here's my steps in solving that equation. First of all, divide by 2. You don't want a number here at the start. So the first thing I've done is divided by 2 giving me this. Then I go shift cos to both sides. Now notice on the left I'm left with 2x, not just x. Alright, so I've gone shift cos root 3 over 2. My calculator gives 30 degrees as the only solution there. Now I've got to come up with these other ones. Here's how you find those other ones. You can either use the graph. The calculator's told you that 30 degrees is one possible solution here. Remember, not to the original equation, guys, but to the, the question, what's the inverse cos of root 3 over 2? All right, so 30 degrees is one possibility. I can see from drawing my line across here at root 3 over 2 that my other possible solution is 330 degrees. The unit circle, I love this way. I prefer this way. There's 30 degrees. Hit the circle. Go to the x-axis. That's my cos value, root 3 over 2. Where's the other angle that will give me the same cos value? This one right here. So for any cos value, it's just a reflection in the x-axis. Yep, we'll give you another angle with the same cos value. So what's that angle there? Clearly that angle there is 360 minus 30, which is 330 degrees. 
Okay, so we've got our first two angles here, 30 or 330. How did I get these other two? Rule simply, I added 360 onto both of these. Adding 360 under 30 degrees gives me 390. It's the exact same angle as 30, right? It's 30 degrees. Add on another full turn. Adding 360 under 330, same thing. Now, the reason I've done that is because our final answers, we have to divide by 2 from this step here. All right? So if we divide all our answers by 2, you can see that all our solutions now are in the range we wanted from 0 to 360 degrees. So another way you could think of it is our 2x values have got to be between 0 and 720. Okay, that's the basic method for finding your four solutions here. Right, here's an equation with tan in it. Tan 3x minus 1 equals minus 2. We're in radians here. You've got to note that. You've got to make sure that you, in the question you can see, okay, they want the answers in radians, not in degrees. All right, so what have I done first? Added 1 to both sides. Then go and shift tan of both sides. Shift tan of minus 1, there's the radians that will pop up on your screen. Or if you've got your calculator in the right mode and you've got one of the new calculators, it'll tell you the exact value is minus pi over 4. Okay, now this is an example where you don't want to draw the graphs. The unit circle is much easier. Now I'm trying to find other values of tan to the minus 1 of minus 1 or shift tan of minus 1. I'm going to find those first and then divide by 3. Okay, don't divide by 3 here and then try and find some other angles. Okay, so minus pi over 4 we know is one solution. There it is on my unit circle, minus pi over 4. I know that if I go straight across the circle, okay, just continue that line straight across, that'll give me another angle with the same tan value. So minus pi over 4 is that one, so this angle over here must be 3 pi over 4. Okay, if you like it degrees in degrees, that's minus 45 plus 180. Okay, but this one here we want to try and stay in radians. So there's our next value that we could get. Now how do we get the other ones? Okay, we've got minus pi over 4. Now notice that we don't want any negative angles, so our original angle as well is a, is a problem. Negative pi over 4 is the same as this big angle all around here, 7 pi over 4. Okay, 2 pi minus pi over 4, 7 pi over 4. So that's how I've got these first two here, 3 pi over 4 or 7 pi over 4. I've then added 2 pi onto each of these ones here to get my next two. All right. So 3 pi over 4 plus 2 pi, you could do that on your calculator, 3 quarters plus 2 will give you 11 over 4. 7 over 4 plus 2, think of it this way, 7 over 4 lots of pi plus 2 lots of pi we we'll give you 15 pi over 4. Now for our last step, we divide by 3 to get our solutions. Okay. Now we could keep going here. We could, I could then add on 2 pi onto these ones here and keep going forever and ever and ever. But once I divide by 3, I need to think, okay, which, how many of these angles are actually inside the range we're looking for? Remember, our original range was between 0 and pi. So in fact, only 3 of these angles make the grade. If I go 15 pi divided by 4, divide that by 3, 15 pi over 12 is outside the range we're looking for. So here's my final three answers, or these answers are acceptable as well, these three answers in radians. Okay, last example quickly. This is a specific kind of question I just wanted to quickly show you. We've got a mixture of sine and cos terms in here. It's pretty tricky. How the heck do we do this? There's a very specific first step here, guys. Divide everything by cos 2x. And the reason this works is because 0 divided by cos 2x on the right hand side is still 0. We get 1 for this term, sine 2x over cos 2x is tan 2x. So now we end up with an equation just in terms of tan which we can solve as we did before. Subtract 1 from both sides, divide both sides by root 3. Okay, so you just want the tan term on its own. Shift tan of both sides. The calculator here spits out negative 30 degrees. We want our answers in, in radians, so negative pi over 6. But we want our answers between minus pi and pi. Remember, we're going to divide by 2 at the very end. Okay, so I'm trying to find, well, what are the other angles here? So the unit circle helps me find what those other angles are going to be. Okay, there's minus 30 degrees. There's the other angle that gives us the same tan values. 
okay so if that's minus 30 this angle around here will be 180 minus say, 150 which is 5 pi over 6 this angle here is just going to be minus pi over 6 and then you take off so uh, sorry let's look at this angle over here so you could think of that angle as negative 7 pi over 6 and you could think of this original angle here as all the way around 360 minus 30 degrees which is 330 or 11 pi over 6 okay so there I got my four angles I divide by two to get my final solutions